I briefly talk about counseling, very brief, very brief. If a couple come to you, or you know a couple is fighting, they're having some problem. Well, if they're fighting, then you want to talk to them individually to calm them down first. And then uh, to calm them down, the way is not to tell them to calm down, but to say, respond to the feelings. Important, in counseling, respond to the feelings. I know you're very unhappy now. I know in your marriage, there's a lot of difficulty. You felt unheard. Don't, we don't have to name the bad things about their person. It just talk about this person in front of us, this person. I know you feel unheard. You have tried, but it seems no good result. So you feel disappointed. You, you don't know the way out. So sometimes you lose hope. So these are responding to the feelings. I'm not saying you, you want them to stay in that negative feelings, but I just respond to the feeling. If, I, if you're unhappy and I say that to you, yes, I know that you feel unheard, that he doesn't hear you and you feel disappointed and you feel so difficult, you don't find a way, so sometimes you, you you're disappointed. When I say this, do you feel, how do you feel? How would you feel? Just <coughs> so if you understand the situation. Right, that I understand. It doesn't mean I want you to continue to be disappointed, but I understand at this point you're disappointed. So when we accept someone's feeling, doesn't mean I want that person to continue to have that feeling. So we need to learn to say, yes, I know in your situation you feel unhappy, you feel hurt, you feel there's no way out, you have tried your best and there seems to be no way out at this point. So we respond to the feelings and then, and then we want to give hope in a counseling and we say, uh, I see good things about your husband and, and there you know, there's, can be something can be done. And so, so calm them down first and then put them together <coughs> for the counseling. Now if someone is already, a couple is already ready, calm, then we can start the counseling. The first, usually, I would say, can you name something good about your wife or husband? Can you say something good about your husband and wife? Now, sometimes, some husband cannot name it. <laughs> they find it hard to name it. Then we can help. Uh, does your wife take good care of the family? Yes. Well, does your wife care about you? Wash your clothes and help you? Make you, feel, make you feel happy in some ways, <coughs> then help you, you know, guide you. So first, what you appreciate each other. Second, do you want the marriage to be better? Now if someone already don't want the marriage to be better, they are giving up. But generally, if they are still going to church, generally they say, yes, I want to work on the marriage. Because that is very important. So then we can tell them, you want to work on marriage, there are ways. There are ways. And there are ways that are helpful. If you follow these ways, it will work. Are you willing? So that's asking for commitment. But I say it in a way very positive. I didn't say, you have to do something and then we'll be better. I don't say that. There's a way. God can help you. And there are ways to help your marriage. Are you willing that the marriage will go better? Have you noticed my tone of voice? It's all positive. There's hopeful. It's hopeful. So, asking them, do you want to work on marriage? And then, uh, you can ask them what they see now. For some marriage, you can ask them what they can vision the marriage. If it's better, how would it be like? Can you vision what's your dream marriage? In the future, what can happen in a marriage? So they have a dream, a, a goal, that uh, so they can say to each other, this is what I like the marriage to be like before I start the counseling. And then sometimes I start with talking about the differences of the sexes. And I tell them, you know, what happened to most couple, it's very common. Most couples like this. Because God created men to be concentrated in matters, doing things, 
in project, in activities. That's why sometimes men don't listen to the woman that much. But that's something that can be learned. And a wife pay attention to relationship and want more care. And therefore, sometimes the woman feel... Now, I also would say because God created women caring. They care. But then when they don't receive the care, then sometimes they feel unhappy and then they could repeat what they want to say. They repeat and the husband doesn't listen, he will re she will repeat more and more. And the husband feel unhappy. And this happened in many marriages. That the husband doesn't respond, doesn't care, and then the wife talks more and more and become emotional. And that's what the pattern of most marriages. And this can be changed. So I explain the difference of the sex in a brief way, not so long, you know, just as just now when I said, but in a brief way to explain the difference. And then how we can do it, the positive way of communication. First, the heart to love and appreciate. And because I asked them, do you see good things about your husband and wife? Then they see the good things about, and think of how about when you were dating? Can you see the good things about your husband and wife? So, do you, are you willing to work on a marriage so that you can restore that relationship? And how can we restore? Then I talk about the words of grace. Words of grace, I will be like, I care about you, I love you, you are important, I want to help you, what can I do for you? And then words of the law. I, I said it before, I explore, uh, guide, when one, someone knows the answer, we want to guide the other person. And then, uh, uh, teaching. Sometimes we have to teach. And then, request. And then, command. And then, accuse. And then, condemn. Now, actually, we want to avoid those. But sometimes, we still have to use it. But we can use all this in a gentle way. Explore means to find ways to solve a problem, explore. Instead of saying, you do this, you do that. That's command. And that's strong command because it's strong language. You do this, do that. That's strong language. So explore how to solve a problem and then uh, guide. If one already knows, to guide your person to think. And then um, teaching, sometimes there need to be some teaching about... So, to tell them that there can be different ways of communication and we can communicate in a gentle way. To request, oh, could you clear the garbage for me instead of clear the garbage for me? You know, that's strong command. So request and command. Sometimes we have to accuse. For the marriage will be like this. Uh, but the best is not to use it in marriage. But sometimes it's like this that uh, do you realize that what we're doing here, is, instead of saying what you do, what we're doing here is affecting the children and can hurt the family and, and it can have bad results. So what can we do? So that is accusing. That's, but that's gentle accusing. Okay. So let them know this communication, how to do it better in a gentle way. So when you go home, try to use gentle words of grace and words of law in a gentle way. It's like, thank you so much for cooking for me. I really appreciate you. That's, that's words of grace. And then, um, uh, could, you, uh, could you wash the dishes for me? I'm very happy if you can help me. I have so much to do, can you help me? That's request, friendly request. So we want to use those, that kind of language. And then I'll tell them, the two of them, facing each other. Can you face each other? Now, when they say the words of appreciation, I also tell them to face each other. Tell the wife, say, you, uh, I appreciate you for what, for what. And then, and then I'll ask them to bring up any issue in your family. It can be big, it can be small. And then you try to talk about it. When you talk about it, don't accuse the other person. Don't say, well, the children are not disobedient and you don't help them. You don't, help, you don't pay attention to them. That's accusing. To raise up the issue can be like this. Okay, how can we help the children? The children now, I don't know how to help. It's a big problem in the family. What can we do? And then the two of them communicate. And I will be counseling, I'll be watching. The moment they use any accusational language, strong language, then I will stop and say, think about what you just said. 
what would that make the other person feel? How can you, how can you say it differently? And then if they don't know how to say it, then I will change it for them. So this needs a lot of wisdom. You have to have the habit of saying things positively. You notice that when I talk, I, when I preach, or even just now when I talk how to encourage someone, I always use very positive language. Because I've done it for a long time, it becomes my habit. So for you to be able to do counseling well, you need to learn this kind of language. So, uh, and be able to analyze what they say, whether it's positive or negative. So first, you need to learn this kind of language before you can guide them. Because for, if you just do counseling like this, you talk to the husband and wife, okay, you do this, you do that, they go home, they won't listen, they won't follow. And you just tell, okay, husband, you can say this to the wife, uh, you can say gently, I love you, I care about you. But it's still, they have to say it themselves. And then you guide them how to say it right. Or they say it right, and then you say, very, very good, you do it well. Okay, now, how, when you resolve the problem, how can you resolve it? And then you guide them. This is my way of counseling. Let them resolve it in front of you. And then when they resolve it and they cannot do it well, then you say, okay, now, what you just said, what do you think it will make the other person feel? And if the person says, um, I guess it will make him feel unhappy, then how can you say it better in a different way? And so I guide him or her to say in a positive way, to resolve one problem, and then I go to another one. So they get used to it, and then they go home, and I ask them to WhatsApp me, tell me what is it going, how, it, how is it going, and are you improving? So that's one way I help them in a marriage counseling, to have them practice saying positive words. So for you, you first have to have, do it well enough. And the second you have to be able to do is discern right away. When people are talking negatively, you know what they are doing. Because that's very important to discern. So that's something I think is very hard to learn in a short time. But you first practice work on your own marriage. And sometimes if you are forced to do marriage counseling because there's no choice, no one else to do it, then you, you just try to guide and, and appreciate what they're doing well and then guide them how to speak gently. And, and have them do this. And even though you do, you're not doing a very perfect job, but when, the more you do it, the better you do it. So uh, I'll stop here to just let you know a general way how to do it.